Hey guys, Turk here. I hope you're having a good one. I've been sitting on this ARC A750 review for quite some time. Given the rocky launch and the poor reception from the gaming community, I went ahead and picked it up kind of as a tech souvenir of sorts. But with the recent announcement of Raja Kadori leaving Intel, I figured now is a good chance to revisit this GPU and ultimately see if the ARC GPUs are a success for Intel or if they were a huge failure. And while we're at it, let's see if the Intel A750 has a place in the market as we see it early in 2023. When the GPU launched, Intel's ARC brand had been cooking in the development oven for about five to six years. The Alchemist architecture is their first out of the gate in their grander scheme of GPU architectures, so let's see where the A750 fits in with the family of graphics cards. Leading the way is Intel's first flagship, the A770. Initially, Intel planned for the card to hit RTX 3070 Ti performance levels, which at the time of the announcement was a huge godsend for gamers back in 21. But looking at the product specs, a 700 megahertz bump in GPU core clock speed and doubling the GDDR memory capacity, it can only make up a little bit of lack in raw compute horsepower. In reality, the A770 is comparable to the RTX 3060 Ti. So for an early generation flagship, this type of performance leaves many gamers begging for a better card. On the other end of the performance spectrum is the meager A380. Technically, there isn't a 3000 series GPU from Nvidia that performs just this bad. So for the sake of argument, let's throw it up against the RTX 3050. Running at a total GPU power of 75 watts, it shouldn't surprise you that the A380 falls right in line with other Turing or Polaris-based GPUs. And that leaves us with the card we're going to be testing today, Intel's A750. The A750 shaves off 4 of Intel's Z cores and 8GB of RAM to help keep costs down, while only dropping to comparable performance levels of the RTX 3060. Combine that with all the software solutions that Intel plans to roll out, like the XESS upscaler and enhanced encoder support, this card could be a decent entry-level enthusiast card. So for the family of cards, what does Alchemist bring to the table? Overall, the A770 is priced at about $55 cheaper than its equivalent performer, the RTX 3060 Ti. Intel's A750 is far more competitive than the 3060. The 3060 can be about $62 more expensive if you happen to find the A750 on sale or going with the third-party card from ASRock. As for the A380, $120 is still too expensive at that performance level. So it appears that Intel's first generation of GPUs slot in pretty perfectly with the entry-level GPUs from both AMD and Nvidia. But for potential buyers and gamers out there, this might not be a good market segment to start off your budding GPU product line. But 1080p at ultra quality settings really isn't the sweet spot for this entry level GPU. As such, I'm going to be testing each of the games today at console equivalent settings. Now I know, I know, consoles are never a really good starting point when it comes to the PC versus console talking points. But from my perspective, I see console equivalent settings being the bare minimum of entry for getting into PC gaming. For that, I've gone and selected presets and configurations blessed by our brother in arms, Alex Battaglia, in 14 games. These include benchmark staples like Forza Horizon 5, Borderlands 3, and Dawn of War. I'm also going to throw in some fan favorites like Hogwarts Legacy, Returnal, Witcher 3, and Spider-Man Remastered. Now ignore John Linneman for just a minute. We're also going to be testing Fortnite and Rainbow Six Siege at eSports quality settings for all of you eSports gamers out there. As for hardware, I don't have access to an RTX 3060 currently on my shelf of GPUs back there, but I do have an equivalent level of GPU with the RTX 2060 Super. I'm going to throw that in the test rig and I'm going to put the rest of the test system specs down in the description. All right, performance. Overall, the RTX 2060 Super and Intel A750 trade blows in several titles. 
Hogwarts, Returnal, Borderlands, Call of Duty, and Spider-Man split hairs between the two graphics cards. Forza, Hitman, Fortnite, and Rainbow Six Siege show a bit more spread, but they effectively deliver the same experience. Now, I'm not showing Rainbow Six results here because it kind of blows out the scaling in my chart, but Rainbow Six Siege can easily cap out any of the monitor refresh rates. It successfully runs 1080p at 240Hz, 1440p at 120Hz, and 4K 60Hz monitors with both GPUs when running with the Vulkan API. The biggest issue comes with Cyberpunk, Valhalla, Witcher 3, Red Dead Redemption 2, and Dawn of War 3. Intel clearly has more work to do in the driver department. Still, in other instances, such as with Vulkan-based games, it works pretty well. So long story short, Intel, get your spit together. Bumping up to 1440p, the Intel A750 stretches its legs a bit and shows decent performance across the board. The only noticeable loss is still with Cyberpunk 2077 and Dawn of War 3. Otherwise, the A750 scores solid wins against the RTX 2060 Super. As for 4K, these cards are a bit underpowered for this native resolution, but it's far more capable than the RTX 2060 Super. From a performance perspective, it does appear that my results kind of validate the Tom's hardware results that we showed before, which shows that the A750 and RTX 2060 Super kind of share equivalent performance across the board. But given the competitor's age and the variety of cards in the same performance bracket, does the A750 make sense in this market, especially with upcoming announcements from AMD and Nvidia for their entry-level and mid-range graphics cards? Let's start with the RTX 3060. Right now, the 3060 can be picked up on the used market for about 290 US dollars. The A750 received a generous price cut recently, so it can be found between 230 and 250 bucks. That $60 savings is a great deal, especially since the performance improvement shouldn't be bumping you into any other performance categories. The next comparison at the $230 price point is the GTX 1080 Ti. If you trust Tom's Hardware's data here, both cards are comparable in performance, power consumption, and price. But at this price point, do you really want to buy a seven-year-old used GPU? I sure wouldn't, but that's just me. As the time of this recording, the RTX 2060 Super that we tested today can be found for right around 210 bucks, and to me, it provides much better value. RTX branded GPUs get DLSS2 and they get NVENC encoder support, which are hard to pass up for any entry level content creator. Now I've got to dig into XCSS and Intel's provided encoder support to give a definitive recommendation in that regard. Still coming in $20 cheaper than Intel, the used market might be worth the risk. AMD's older GPUs scream value in the used market, so how does that all shake out? A brand new RX 6600 costs right at $250, which could be a better value compared to the A750. The 6600 typically performs a bit better, but your mileage may vary. But that same card can also be picked up on eBay for $180, saving you a whopping $50 on the used market. If you want to squeeze even more performance out of your dollar, a used RX 6600 runs for about $205. In my testing, the 6600 XT gets you near PlayStation 5 levels of performance for $25 fewer than the A750. If you still have fuel in your flux capacitor, you can go even further back in time with the 5700 XT. It remains relevant at around $170. Intel's Alchemist lineup kind of fits in this weird spot in the GPU market right now. The A750 performs well enough to make it a compelling option at 1080p, with decent enough 1440p performance to keep it relevant for a couple more years. As for brand new GPUs, it's really the only viable option at 250 bucks, except of course AMD's RX 6600. But the Alchemist lineup really looks to be more comparable to the Turing-based GPUs from 2018, not the Ampere-based GPUs from 2020. Paying $230 for a card outclassed by cheaper, older cards doesn't really sound like a good option. Bottom line, Intel's first take of GPUs, especially the A750, just aren't worth the gamble right now. Sure, their drivers have gotten better, but AMD's RX 6600 performs better at a similar price. 
And at the same time, Nvidia's card has better features while only costing $20 more. And suppose you're looking for pure value. If that's the case, the secondhand market has better performing cards at the same price level and other cards with better features and perform about the same. I will keep my hands on the ARC A750 for now in order to do more testing with XCSS and the encoder presets to see if those types of added benefits are more comparable to what Nvidia offers to the table. But for now, the A750 just doesn't win in performance or in price. And to me, that smells like failure. And that's all I got to say about the ARC A750 for now. Let me know down in the comments if you guys think I missed anything or if there's any other kind of head to heads you want me to do between some of these lower tier GPUs. As always, you can catch me over on Twitter at the Turk. I love to talk to you guys, show memes and all that good stuff. But as always, thank you for sticking to the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.